Um, if you've never met me before, I want to get a couple of myths about some TV characters. Uh, not myths, I want to get a couple of truths about some TV characters that, that most people reference me with. So, for the most part, and I don't really probably have to say this to you all, usually most people mistake me for Denzel Washington. I'm not, <laughs> I know I have to say this to y'all, but y'all already saw that. But, um, let me straighten that out. I'm not, nor am I related to that I know of Denzel Washington. However, I do have the pleasure of saying that a part of the character that's on Martin, uh, the Martin Lawrence show, Tommy, was uh, a character that he kind of he shaped out, out of our uh, experience. We went, we grew up together, went to school together, Eleanor Roosevelt, and um, I was. It's actually the opposite. I had so many jobs um, growing up. I was young, but I was enterprising all the time. So Tommy ain't got no job. It's kind of a flip. Um, and Tommy actually, my haircut looks better than Tommy's. I'm gonna tell you that right now. Um, but yeah, so. Uh, I get to have a lot of fun, um, I've got a lot of great experiences, and I try to translate that into our experiences together. And I'm going to tell you all, every one of these brothers right here have such tremendous uh, charisma, character, and personality too. That's the other thing, I, I, I got a chance to really see you when you put your guards down and are really willing to open yourself up, make yourself vulnerable, and share your true identity. And uh, I'm sure a lot of people in this room have seen um, views of that, and I would encourage you to get comfortable uh, with that version of yourselves um, so that you can carry this with you even away from this address. So I'm going to start off and we're going to call um, your name, and I'm just ask you to come. And you can start this, and I'm going to ask our uh, guests to stand. You just start here, and you'll end here, and I'll hand you your certificate. Um, and when you, when you exit, and you just come back this way to your seat. So when you hear your name called, we're not going to go in any particular order. Um, when you hear your name called, I want you, I want you to come on up and you'll go that way first. Uh, my man, Captain America, that's what I, I Mike Brower. Y'all seen the Lego movie? Um, but, uh, this is a character I got from the Lego movie. This is the master builder, Mr. Bruce Barbe. Get in a little closer. A little closer. 
Don't be shy. Ready? One, two, three. Hey, 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 <laughs> Jordan Hurts.
So, um, throughout this process, um, um, we have uh, awards that we call corporate citizenship awards. And it's just uh, people that actually have a certain uh, presentation and tone about how they handle and go through and guide through. Um, and while everyone is excellent, everyone has done some outstanding, these individuals establish themselves as, as somebody that has an a, 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 a additional spirit, additional focus, and a tenacity about what's going on, um, and what's consistent and persistent. And the first one to receive the award, and when they, these awards, I'm going to ask you um, um, at the time, we've got one more a person at the end, but at that time, I'm going to ask you to share a few words um, when you're presented with these uh, particular awards. You get like 60, 90 seconds to just share what's on your heart. Okay, and those of you all in this group, all of you all prepared for that. The first one, Maurice, uh, Mr. Ronnie Roundtree. ceremony where we had a bunch of people coming in to talk. I said, we're going to need some uh, water for this uh, event we're having today. So I went to Costco, got a case of water, put it in the fridge, let it get cold all day, stopped and bought some cups, brought it in, put it on the tables, and uh, it wasn't all about trying to get credit, credit for bringing the water. It's just that I'm part of my, a team, and my team needs this water today. And just watching everybody, you know, uh, going to enjoy that water. And one person, oh, yeah, it's cold, too. <laughs> it made me feel good. <laughs> but before I took this class, I might have been just saying, oh, you never see me paying $2.92 for a bottle of water. I can get mine from Costco. <laughs> like that, I was in training down there. I had a different thought, and the, and the brain was working because I'm standing there behind it and I'm thinking about what I could do to help my teammates in, in my class. Now, mind you, none of us, including me, knew who bought the water. My assumption was somebody on my staff got it. It was just there when I arrived. And in fact, I was just so grateful for the water. Uh, I, I hit two, three bottles in them during the session. I just made an assumption that it was somebody on the staff, and I didn't learn until much later the, the story. I, I remember Ronnie and I, we, we chatted. We were in that line the day before. Um, so I remember that encounter and everything. But literally, just the, the initiative and the care that he did that, um, and I had no idea, none of us did, all the guests, all of us that were here drank the water, had no idea the whole time, they actually took it and made sure it was cold the night before and let it thaw out uh, the next day to prepare, all that care, mm -hmm. and that epitomizes what we're trying to transfer uh, in the training realm, so Ronnie, thank you for being a great example. <laughs> Philip Robinson. You're gonna get a segue for the next so much that he went through 
and still do what he do from the heart and have a team of people that had the type, same type of heart that he had, man, that's amazing. And just the other day, I, I told my lady, we went past like a senior home. And I said, we got to volunteer. It's around the corner from him. I said, we got to volunteer. And I, I thought about you. This man volunteered. He, he was homeless. He volunteered for a year with no pay. I said, if he can do that, man, man, I got. I said, I got to look more deep into myself. And I thought about doing things of this nature for a long time, but he just brought it all the way out. And this, 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 uh, this training grounds. I think this is very special, and I think it's amazing. I think it's gonna blow up so big mm -hmm. to be a model everywhere else. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate the opportunity to really be it. I thank all of you. Mm -hmm. And and the brothers. Mm -hmm. Phil owns his own company, and uh, anyway. the great thing about it is one of the things that was discovered. Uh, and having an expert like Lisa and Nancy who came from Community Forklift the other day, there's so much more of a robust earning opportunity in his business model um, already that, um, that uh, we, we're helping them to realize that there's literally a whole lot of money in what he already was doing naturally and already been committed to. So uh, this is going to be an enterprising uh, business owner before very long that's sitting amongst us, uh, among a lot of others that um, we all know uh, it's special because we get a chance to share the remnants and the snapshots in time right now. And I'm very excited as uh, as uh, Warri said, to see three years from now, uh, the enterprise uh, that you build is going to take care of employment for a lot of people. man. so congratulations and thank you. Thank you very much. And this last award um, is named after uh, a colleague of Training Rounds. Um, she uh, was more like my sister, program director of Training Rounds, and uh, the first African American female in Prince George's County history to reach the level of uh, Deputy Chief of Fire Service. Um, she was tragically killed about five months ago, um, and uh, it was sudden. She was working for Training Rounds at the time. Um, teaching, facilitating, managing, um, in love with everybody and everything and, and to do a training around her spirit, embody love, leadership, and excellence. And uh, so we created this award, award um, called the Collar Blue Spirit Award. Her name is Collar Blue. If you look her up, she's renowned. Everybody that is somebody that's been involved in county level, county uh, work, um, praises her. And, and to know her uh, was to love her. So the last thing she said, the last training rounds class, uh, I asked her, I asked all the facilitators something that I don't recall asking ever before this particular morning. And I asked each one of them to go through and just say to this particular cohort, why, do you, why are you helping me with training rounds? So each facilitator uh, shared from their hearts, but five days before she was suddenly killed, I remember what Carla said that morning so vividly to the class and to the group. And she said, Tom, I do this because I... Uh, God taught me that every ounce of love that I ever get, I'm supposed to give it all away. So when I die, I want to be empty. Mm -hmm. She said that that day. That was Monday. Um, and, and as profound as it was, we were like, wow. But to, to have her leave us five days later, uh, every day since, it's really brought that to life um, and the urgency. But, I mean, we had plans. We, we, we got written plans that, you know, we spent time with Carla training around in, in, in the moment we're in now because she was so prominent in Prince George's County she was poised to help us and to come into this county and do great things because she was a former uh, fire chief so um, so we have this award called the Call of Blue Spirit Award and this is just somebody who their spirit just gives a jolt to the process their spirit just gives a jolt to the group or to the conversation or the situation and um, this person um, is uh, someone who uh, I think a lot of us have, have gleaned something, shared something, and experienced something with this particular brother during this whole last three weeks. And um, he's just somebody that uh, exemplifies that, uh, that there is still opportunity in front of everyone, no matter what uh, is in your rear view mirror. It's what's in your bigger, larger windshield that really matters. None other than 
uh, Mr. Bruce Barbet. Some, some, sometimes we're fairly successful, other times uh, it takes a little work effort 
is, is kind of getting uh, employers sensitive to life happening, right? But you got to understand, most companies that you're going to work for are social service organizations. The bottom line, it's a what, business transaction. So we are equipping you to recognize that. It's not personal. So the personal things that we've all dealt with aren't allowed there. But if you just so happen to have a hiccup and if there is a little chance that we can step in and in, 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 intervene, we will. But our conversation with you is going to call you out on which we know you already know because we taught you. So there's a level of accountability in that tough love that's also part of the process. So there's a lot more that's going to get spelled out, but I kind of want to lay out a little bit of the expectations of how our process works in order for you to be successful moving forward from this point. Um, from this point, I just want to tell you all again, thank you all so much for coming out and being supportive. Uh, thank you so much. So hopefully we'll be able to follow up with, with your agency and kind of get uh, some things going and you can kind of attest to what the experience is like because we're certainly looking for uh, these brothers to help us lead other people through the process. Um, and the last thing I'm going to say is uh, thank you to the team. Thank you to Lori Jones uh, for helping to put the day together. <laughs> She has a story that's emerging. She has she's brought um, some experience, and she came right through the training rounds. We met her in training rounds phase one, and she was so impressive and had a certain interest in track. And she's been uh, working closely with our staff for the last couple months now, couple months, maybe six weeks or so. Um, so I just want to thank you because she's from the D.C. track, and she came all the way out here just to join in. Uh, and that's the kind of family and community that we have. Um, and uh, of course, Arthur Gross, you all heard from, and Scott Brown in the back. So what's going to happen is we're going to edit it and, and put it together, and we're going to make sure that you all get a copy of a disc each of uh, this evening. Um, we're going to edit it, pretty it up, put names and all that kind of stuff. It'll probably take a couple of weeks to do that. And then we're going to make sure each of you all get a copy of this so you can have it as a memento. And then we'll post snippets of it on our website and our social media platforms. You know Training Grounds has a Facebook page. And of course, you already know Training Grounds has a website. Um, so I want you all to make sure you all stay in contact with what's happening, what's evolving, what's developing. Mm -hmm. That I want to close out by just telling you again, I love you. I'm going to ask Arthur Gross to come forward for closing prayer. And we're going to ask you to take as many of those snacks as you would like. Um, and uh, feel free to take them out the door because my waist I'm working on my beach body from 2014. <laughs> 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 Two years off, <laughs>